This is the Biz News Podcast, one-on-one conversations with experts in business and personal development. Sometimes success is the ability to see how a humble product, popular in one area, can fill a need in a totally different area. Entrepreneur Bob Schlegel did that with something you'll find in more than 2,000 Home Depot stores, and perhaps where you were just standing, paving stones. Beyond starting growing and running a business, it's important to first find a foundation to ensure a meaningful entrepreneurial career, says the man who brought the concept of do-it-yourself paving from Canada to the U.S. Bob Schlegel is our guest on this Biz News interview podcast. Bob, uh, why don't we start by telling our viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself. You're in Dallas, Texas now, but you have a international background. Well, I was a farm boy in uh, Ontario, Canada, uh, until uh, we started expanding our companies in the late uh, 70s, early 80s, uh, when I moved here um, in 85. So we're living in Dallas for, for what, 37 years now. So you consider yourself uh, a Canadian or a Texan? Well, we're dual citizens now, so we go bo- go both ways, I guess you could say. Uh, well, at least, we, at we least since the uh, uh, since the uh, pandemic has eased up a little bit. For sure. We also have some interest in California. In Southern California, we have a, a pretty big uh, land development we're working on right now. So, so we cover uh, and we've had companies that had like concrete company that plants in uh, Northern California uh, and cross country. So. Well, Bob, you have, uh, if you think of an entrepreneur, you might think of somebody who has started a business and built it up uh, and has always been in the uh, cotton candy business or whatever it might have been. But you have a whole slew of companies behind you. Uh, Tell us about that. Well, I became a CPA back in the the day. I wanted to be, originally wanted to be a pump, a gas, my dad had a gas station and a Massey Ferguson tractor dealership. So I wanted to worry. I want first wanted to be a grease monkey and uh, we're pump gas and that kind of stuff was my was my dream, and my mother uh, forced me to not quit school after grade ten to become an auto mechanic and then apprenticeship program. She made me go back to finish high school, go to college, and end up with a CPA degree and worked in uh, public accounting with uh, KPMG for several years. And but I've always had the entrepreneur's blood in me, and um, my my dad bought and followed my father's footsteps. Kind of and wanted to uh, just run my own shop and and uh, have make my own decisions. Well, you did not start out uh, by running a gas station, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. We first the first uh, big resource company was a healthcare. My wife's a registered nurse, and um, we got interested in uh, nursing room retirement centers, retirement centers, and uh, we opened uh, some of them in, in Texas. About about a couple here in Texas and and uh, improved them and made them better and, and uh, made them very attractive. And we grew that uh, over 15 years. We had 15 facilities uh, and we grew that from scratch. And so you can, you can start small and, and grow pretty big. So we sold that in uh, 94. Well, Bob, uh, a lot of people would like to go into business, but they, they don't have a gigantic amount of money to do it. Did you, uh, were you sitting on a pile of cash or how did you finance that first business? No, we started from scratch. We borrowed $1,500 to get married and we bought a sofa and a kitchen, kitchen suite. Uh, I grew that. Uh, we worked at, we worked at, we, so we worked in the county business for eight years and trying to build a little bit of a nest egg and use that and just uh, rolled it up. We sold our, actually sold our ho- a house in Dallas, in Canada. And like to invest in our first uh, healthcare center. So, so you threw it all onto the table and uh, rolled the dice. Pretty much, yeah. We kind of bet the farm on the first one, which is kind of a danger. I don't recommend that to many people unless you're really confident the first one's going to work good, because um, uh, you want to save a nest, save some of your nest egg for for the next round. Because you know half the half new companies don't make it, so you have to. Um, you don't want to bet everything and keep it a little bit for, for the next round when you fail. So the first fail, when you do fail, you know, fail is kind of an acronym for first attempt in learning. You know, the, the, the fail acronym, I call it, because uh, you're, going, you're going to get hit in the most. Like Mike Tyson says, you're going to have a good, good plan for the, for, the, for the fight. But when the first time you hit in the most, everything changes and you, you know, start to uh, go in random moves. Well, that, that's certainly good advice, but uh, let, I don't want to appear as Mr. Gloom and Doom, uh, 
Uh, but let me uh, have you talk a little bit about the negatives of running your own company or trying to build it as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, partners and trouble with those. Sure, but I've had several partners. Um, you try and always work on a, work on a win-win, but somehow um, they work themselves out. You know, the good ones stay with you and the bad ones don't. But uh, but basically, you, you start you end up starting from starting from scratch and uh, keep working away and try things, fix it, you know, try it, fix it, try and fix it and keep on doing, going. The big thing is you never give up. Persistence, I think, is the number one thing in, in the success of any startup and any entrepreneurship, really, because you're going to get hit in the mouth. You're going to get knocked down. You have to pull yourself back up and never, never give up. Did you ever have uh, moments, three o'clock in the morning, waking up and saying, what a fool I've been trying to do this. And if so, how would you get beyond that? Sometimes also the big things in the shower, you know, in the shower in the morning, you get, you get, you get oh, why didn't I think of that? You know, no, it's not, but you have to keep trying things and fixing things and talking with your people and your team, uh, keep your team motivated and uh, keep working in that direction. We have something called the KPIs, key performance indicators that I think are so important to any business, anytime, anywhere. Back in the day, we used to call all our plants and so we know what the production was the day before and the, or the occupancy or the census, uh, that sort of thing. So your key, your key indicators in your, in your company and get them down. Nowadays, of course, you're all on computer. You can check your, you check, but we'd like to print off a daily report with our, with our key performance indicators on that. But um, and now, now the kid, my daughters are all um, in the, um, in the uh, social media advertising business of selling mostly in fashion. Um, my one, my youngest daughter or has a, a company called the called Jojo mom, which sells uh, babe, kids clothing for babies, babies to like five, six years old. And she has a little um, on her, now on her phone, she check every, her, her key performance indicators are on her app. She check them every five minutes on her, on her phone. You know, so it's, it's amazing how things have changed. And uh, so all three girls are, are doing in the uh, fashion business over the internet, basically clothing business over the internet. Uh, and they're all pretty, pretty successfully, pretty, pretty cool for, for an old accountant that, didn't think that was possible, you know, a few, not many years ago. Well, you you examine numbers, of course, and so you're certainly going to be very, very familiar with what's good and what's bad. But I'd like to get back a little bit more to uh, uh, bringing on people, whether they're partners or senior members of your management. Uh, how do you know you've got a good one before you hire them? And how do you know they're bad and you need to get rid of them? And how do you do that? Yeah, I think I don't think there's a secret formula for that. But the HR guys, we've had I've had a lot of HR guys over the years, and I haven't. No, nobody's been. Nobody can. I don't think there's an easy easy answer. I think you get Garrett narrow it down to your best one, two, or three people, uh, and you pick the one you think is best. And the only way you find out is after you work with them for three or six, nine months, or a year. And then you have to if they're working great, that's fantastic. If they're not, you have to make a change and. And it's a it's a win win. Lots of people get terminated from jobs, and the, often look back and say, "Well, that's the best thing that ever happened to me." You know, so it's a, if the sooner you can find out what the, if it's the wrong person, you have to have a heart to heart conversation and make that decision. Uh, and if it's you have to give up, there's lots of things you can try in the meantime. Of course, make sure you communicate well with them each each week or each month, each day. Uh, what's what's going well, what's going bad, and um, but if, but if they can't, if you're if you're convinced after a year. Uh, that there is not the right fit, then you have to make a change and get on with it. Bob, you have bounced from one industry to another. Why? And is that just something you just saw opportunities or you have a long range plan or what? Yeah, I wouldn't call it bouncing. I think we tried different things. So we started the, the my concrete company, I started that, my wife ran the healthcare company and a few months later I started Pavestone company. We had that for 32 years, so it was a big bounce, you know, getting getting that going. From it took us um, it took us uh, 14 years to get our, that company to, to 10 million dollars in sales. It's a long grind, you know, building and building and building. And we started with one employee and and grew it and kept growing and growing. So so 14 years to get to 10 million dollars, another five years to get to 100 million dollars, and then you start getting the accelerating uh, you know theories and compounding rates. And uh, it took one. And then after after three more years, we grew by to 200 million. And every 33 years, we grew by another 100 million. So by 2007, we were a 400 million dollar company uh, from from scratch uh, uh, 32 years earlier. So it's it's well, it's a well, long 
Let, let me go. Let me run that clock back 32 okay. years or okay. however many. Mm -hmm. And you were in the uh, uh, health, well, essentially healthcare business, dealing with senior citizens, and mm -hmm. and you had these homes. How did you move from that to concrete? I mean, well, I can't think of a, <laughs> two more diverse yeah. things. Well, then you told us about partners. My, my wife ran the, she was a nurse and she ran the healthcare company. So a few months later, we started the concrete company at the same time. So we kind of grew them in parallel, but had partners in the healthcare, in the, uh, in the concrete company, one engineer, uh, two engineers from Canada, basically, that came down with me uh, and we started that together. And so that, that got me started in that, in that company. So it helps to have, um, for starting companies, you need, you have, you need partners sometimes to you know, get your interested in, to pique your interest and, and get the industry started. And get some customers going it's all about it's all things having customers right if you don't have happy customers you're not going to have a successful company so that's the key thing so with our partners we we built products made made good products concrete in, they were called paving stones we made to inter, really introduced paving stones to south to the southwest and then and then we took it across america basically with um, supplying home depot and and walmart their concrete products so you you saw an opportunity of, of an unfilled market, uh, a classic uh, move for successful entrepreneurs. Right. Well, the, the paving stones are pretty popular in Canada, but they're really in the south. There hasn't been much of it in the '80s. So we started that, introduced that, and that, that, that even that was a slow grind. It took us 14 years to get uh, a nice, satisfied, got a nice, satisfied bunch of customers, and took another. Uh, it, it took 14 years to convince Home Depot it was a viable product. We started off selling them 11, 11 stores with our, with our paving stones uh, as an experiment. And by the end, uh, you know, 10 years later, we're doing uh, eight, all 2,000 Home Depot stores. So it's it, um, just keep digging and fighting and never giving up. And hopefully one day the one day it hits and you can get a going viable business. Now, you have put a lot of your uh, thoughts in, into a, a new book uh, called Angels and Entrepreneurs. Are you equating angels with entrepreneurs? No, more, more like um, the, the power of the angels are the power of positive thinking. You know, Norman Vincent Peale, uh, you know, wrote the power of positive thinking back in the uh, late 50s, I think it was. Um, and he based it on, on the scripture verse, um, oh, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Uh, the Philippians, uh, pretty popular scripture, uh, and and wrote several books on the power of positive thinking. So with that, with the with that, and then um, and just call it um, what happens with you when you're persistent, and going after things, and work hard for things. You know, the harder they work, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, so combined with a little luck, a little power of positive thinking, the power of prayer, uh, those things all work together. And that sounds like comes pretty soon. You're dealing with angels. It seems to me. And also, angels are also that. It's also also your friends, your family. Um, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of angelic things happening in this world, and and uh, the more you you're blessed if you uh, can attract an angel, lots of angels. So it's really the good things that happen to people when they work hard. In that book, you talk about uh, you have what uh, fundamental pillars. Would you outline those for our audience? Sure. Well, it's really my my pep. Uh, formula I call it PEP. -E it's an acronym for for five uh, P's and E's. Um, if you really spell it out, it's, it can be. It looks like PP, but I had PEP's a better marketing better marketing tool. Even though I flunked marketing a few times, uh, so it's a PEP, the PEP stands for P. The first P stands for persistence. Uh, like we talked about, it's just you got to have persistence, or, or you're not going to get it done in, in entrepreneurship. The next one is education. The more education you have, uh, the better off. The better your chances are going to be. Or Malcolm Gladwell wrote the book, uh, uh, The Outliers, but the 10,000 10, hours, basically five years of working at something until you really get good at it. Uh, so that that was, but to me, the education thing. And the more, the more education, uh, the best thing you can acquire is an education because nobody can take it away from you. If you fail your first time with, with a business, they can take away your the resources you have invested, but they can never take away your education. So it's, education is so important. Um, and then the, the whole entrepreneurship theory that starting your own company is the other, the second E, um, being an entrepreneur and and working your tail off and and you get earning getting just rewards is is that, and then the next P is um, uh, purpose um, and passion. So you have to be passionate about your what you're doing. If you if you love what you're doing, love your work, you never work another day in your life. So it's um, you have to 
that, that with passion. When you when you get the passion, you also have the purpose gets is purpose. You have a purpose to get up in the morning, and it gives you reason to you know get up out of getting bright and shiny every morning and get to work as fast as you can. So, and then um, the other P is um, is um, uh, partnerships. Uh, so the stakeholders, uh, the, the partnership is so important, like we talked about. And uh, all with all stakeholders, we all become, we become all you all become partners. It's been a win-win relationship with your with all stakeholders, your customers, your investors, your bankers, uh, your suppliers. Uh, they're all stakeholders in your in your venture, and you want to keep all those partners and stakeholders you know, happy and, and and really work together to create the win-win to keep a happy customer. You have been very generous w with your thoughts and and your observations, uh, Bob. What would you like to? Uh, tell our audience that we haven't talked about. Well, gosh, I think I think um, give it a try. You know, if you've ever thought of starting a company, uh, you need to try it. Uh, you learn all you can about the, the matter and the subject, and talk to your all your partners and investors and stakeholders, and keep keep give it a try. I think and read read the book, Angels and Entrepreneurs. It's full of uh, advice um, and, and little tips of my experiences in history. And I think it's um, hopefully a guidebook for a lot of people that want to just thinking about taking the step. My advice is do it. And and one more thing, you probably have a way for folks to get in touch with you, such as a website. What would that be? We do. That is bobschlegelauthor.com. It's Bob Schlegel, is S-C-H-L-E-G-E-L, author, bobschlegelauthor.com. And we have lots of tips and um, love to love to be in standby to help anyone that needs, needs, needs it. Now, are you as active in your businesses today as you were back when they were started, or are you moving more towards philanthropy, or what? Yeah, dude, we went half and half, probably. We did a lot of uh, philanthropic uh, things. Um, we'd have been in, we'd been married for fifty years, been in the business for fifty years, so it's um, hopefully time to harvest a little bit and, and turn things over to, to my family and kids and get things get things rocking. You've been watching the Biz News Podcast. We welcome your input. Send your email to editor at biznews.com. Thanks for watching.